Here it is. The news about the coronavirus. That's right. The news about the coronavirus. We know that we can do it together. And we know that no matter what comes next, we will be here for you. Spectrum News 1. Exclusively on Spectrum. Now, stories. I guess I fell in love Here with it is. It's the real story. The news us. about it's the, the coronavirus. Hi, Mary Lee Melendez. That's Anchor right. Reporter, Spectrum News the one. news about the coronavirus. Changing all the time. We get winter one day and 60s the next. At Spectrum News One, our goal is refreshingly simple. We bring you an accurate, reliable, and local forecast every 10 minutes. We have an incredible, experienced team of people. We don't just know about the weather. Here we it is. The news about we the coronavirus. Forecast with your weather on the ones. That's right. The, the news minutes. about the coronavirus. On Spectrum. Spectrum News One, a new kind of news channel dedicated to refreshing storytelling and empowering communities across the Buckeye State. With your local forecast every 10 minutes and all of the essential news you need 24/7. Plus, in-depth shows and exclusives focused on your community. Always Ohio, always refreshing, always on. We are Spectrum News One, exclusively on Spectrum. Maybe I'll run for president, maybe I won't, but I will tell you that I'm not going to go away. And I don't think Michigan can be... Here it is. The news about the coronavirus. That's right. The news about the coronavirus. Conversations Sunday and Tuesday night at nine on Spectrum News One, exclusively on Spectrum. Chief Meteorologist Eric Gowell. We're getting over the hump. Hump day, that is, where we have uh, some hump chilling day. weather for tonight. Yes. Advisories have been issued for a large part of our area away from the lake uh, for the night tonight. The potential temperatures to get down 35 to 38 degrees. Frost advisories all the way down to the Ohio River. So some chilly air in place, especially considered we're headed toward mid-May. No pressure moving off to the east. We've got another storm system that'll be approaching from the west. That gets in here as we get into the day Friday. So still another day away. Colder air will charge southward with that system. And that gives a bit of an interesting scenario shaping up. Almost a March-like pattern as this will dive south like an Alberta clipper and bring in the colder air with it. What will be a shot of uh, near record cold for us for the start of the weekend. Here comes the system as we head into Thursday. Thursday looks nice, but as we get into Friday, that's when this arrives mainly south of U.S. Highway 30s where we'll get precipitation. If it can fall heavy enough with cold air aloft, it could fall as some snow mixed with rain. That rain snow line could shift south of Columbus during the day Friday. The issue is surface temperatures are expected to be above freezing. So if there's any accumulation, it would have to fall really hard for this to happen. But there could be a coating on some grass Here it is. and pretty much melting about as quick as it accumulates. Long the news trend, about the coronavirus. Relax a bit after a cold That's weekend right. record setting. The Perhaps news about the coronavirus. The middle part of May is when we start to see temperatures closer to normal, but it does look a bit unsettled for us as we head toward mid-month. Here's your seven-day forecast. We do expect a, kind of a sloppy scenario here Friday into Saturday with rain and snow showers. A little bit of snow accumulation though, but we could be near a record low Saturday morning. Showers for Mother's Day, Sunday, that Whoops. would be late Sunday, with showers likely on Monday. Temperatures recover late next week. If you're looking for another reason to get outside during the pandemic, fishing might be the right option for you. Fishing mm. is still allowed in most places statewide. Cleveland Metro Parks is still updating its fishing report, where its 13 major fishing areas are open from 6 in the morning until 11 at night. 
But according to the Ohio Department of Natural Resources, the Hocking Hills State Park and the McGee Marsh Wildlife Area are closed. While big fishing towns like Putin Bay don't rely solely on fishing, it does play a big part. The business people, I think, are obviously on edge. Um, you know, this is something we haven't really faced before. Our business model for the island is typically shaped like a bell curve, and in April is the bottom. May starts to decline. June, July, and August are the peak, so it's been a little bit painful to lose April and part of May. Non-resident fishing licenses are suspended for now. The pandemic has a lot of folks thinking twice about touching every doorknob, countertop, and surface. It's also led to some innovation to respond to those concerns. Central Ohio-based company Millspin has switched gears and designed a product called COVID Key, which it says can help flatten the curve. COVID Key's brass hand extension means no contact with doors, switches, or push buttons. The device is also compatible with touch screens and credit card machines. Ownership and 16 employees say it's now more important than ever to buy American. Millspin is currently producing and fulfilling 1,000 orders a day and growing. Extremely high demand. I can only scale up so quickly. So I've been able to not only employ the 16 people that we have, but I'm also outsourcing work to manufacturers right here in Columbus. Absolutely, it's a good feeling. The COVID key can be found on millspin.com. Prepping for the pandemic gave CBS a huge boost. First quarter profits rose 41% compared to the same quarter last year. Total revenues jumped more than 8% to $66.8 billion. And sales increased 8%, the pharmacy says. It's mostly due to consumers upping their 90-day prescriptions and early refills as they prepare for COVID-19. To honor their work in the fight against COVID-19, JetBlue is giving 100,000 healthcare workers round-trip flights for two. Starting in New York, which is the world's top coronavirus hotspot, 10,000 workers will be given flight certificates. After that, 90,000 more workers across the country will be selected from nominations from the public for flight certificates. JetBlue is calling the giveaway an opportunity to fly it forward. The news continues all day long right here on Spectrum News 1. Coming up in our next half hour, we're going to have the latest on the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as the look at the weather on the one's forecast. But first, it's time for Ohio Voices. about nonprofit community theater. It has shaped who I am for years. I have become very involved in a group called Mason Community Players. One thing I like about it is there is a place for everyone. If you are that shy person who wants to hide in the dark, we have a place for you. If you are super confident and you want to jump on stage, we've got a place for you. Community theater has given me a lot of confidence about myself. I don't know who I would be or where I would be or what I would be without community theater, but what I do know is that they are my family and they are my friends and I love who I am and I love who I have become because of community theater. I could have sworn the treasure was right here. I found something. Oh, that's what that symbol meant. You know, instead of hiding our money, it'd be better if there was a place that'll hold it for you safely. Oh, you could take little bits out when you wanted. How would they know it's yours? Eventually, somebody has a better idea. Oh, you could have a little card with your name on it. Everyone can have secret passwords. I love secrets. Like simple mobile plans with no contracts. And now with 5G, it's a better way to mobile. It's Spectrum Mobile. Give me an opportunity to see every corner of the state. I want to empower our communities and redefine what a news channel can be. Every morning, the people of Ohio have the opportunity to wake up and start fresh. We want to be a different kind of news channel, putting storytelling and community first. Well, it's really humbling to be invited to our neighbors' homes and help them plan their day. Welcome to your morning news. I'm Sophia Constantine. Let's take a look at your weather on the ones. We've got a large band of precipitation. Your morning news. Weekday mornings on Spectrum News One. Spectrum News One. A new kind of news channel. 
dedicated to refreshing storytelling and empowering communities across the Buckeye State. With your local forecast every 10 minutes and all of the essential news you need 24 to 7. Plus, index shows and exclusives focused on your community. Always Ohio, always refreshing, always on. We are Spectrum News One, exclusively on Spectrum. Maybe I'll run for president, maybe I won't, but I will tell you that I'm not going to go away. I don't think Michigan can become the Michigan of old. We're probably the first professional sports team in the world that is built by mm. fans. We're the biggest ice cream shipper in the nation, setting the standard for American ice cream. I get to live my dream. I mean, what, what did I ask for? Conversations, Sunday and Tuesday night at 9 on Spectrum News 1, exclusively on Spectrum. Thank you for joining us here on Spectrum News 1. I'm Curtis Jackson. Let's start by getting you up to date on what you need to know about the coronavirus. More than 21,000 people in Ohio have the virus. The new numbers on Wednesday are up more than 600 from the day before, and that's on par with the average daily jump over the last two, three weeks. Meanwhile, the number of new deaths, hospitalizations, and ICU admissions are all on the rise compared to that same time period. Ohio may soon turn to Washington for help in solving the short-term problem with the state's unemployment fund. State leaders are expected to debate borrowing up to $3.1 billion from the feds to cover the soaring costs of unemployment in the state. Coronavirus is causing a breakdown between the pork supply and processors in Ohio as they shut down. About 3,500 pig farmers are reporting nowhere to send their hogs, while shortages are popping up at some supermarkets and restaurants. And in Texas, a hair salon owner who kept her business open during shutdown orders spent seven days in jail. The Dallas salon owner has refused to apologize, instead telling the judge feeding her kids is not selfish. Continuing coverage of the coronavirus pandemic in just a few moments, but first, let's get an updated check now of your Weather on the Ones forecast. As temperatures drop tonight, keep a watch out for frost. If you've got any plants outside, you'll want to take some precautions, especially if you live in the eastern half of the state. That's where frost advisories are out, mainly along and southeast of Interstate 71. It does include Marion and Delaware down through around Chillicothe. It kind of surrounds Columbus. If you're outside the outer belt of Columbus, the threat for frost will be there all the way down to Hillsboro and uh, Portsmouth. The, the skies will be clear through the night. That sets the stage for the potential for some frost. We expect sunshine, though, tomorrow and a return to southerly winds. That means a nice warm-up in the afternoon. Slight chance we're going to get a pop-up shower as a weak frontal boundary pushes by Thursday evening. Our main precipitation event, though, comes in on Friday. So looking pretty nice. Again, a slight chance for a shower late in the day. Akron, Canton, otherwise sunshine. Lower to middle 60s after that chilly start in the morning. Make it up to 67 in Finley, 65 in Lima, Zanesville, mostly sunny, 64. What we're watching for Friday on the Ones and Minutes. Even as some businesses start to reopen, Here. problems arising from the pandemic are making it more difficult for some to return to work. So what happens if workers can't return to work right away? Our Ori Givens with more on a murky area of unemployment compensation that could put benefits at risk. The federal expansion of unemployment benefits under the CARES Act gave more people access to unemployment. More than 185,000 in Ohio have pre-registered over the past week for the new pandemic unemployment assistance program alone. And with one million total unemployment claims active in the state, JFS has paid out a billion and a half dollars in claims so far. But some Ohioans are getting called back to work, and they may still have some barriers related to COVID-19, like kids being out of school requiring care, or someone in the home suffering from the virus. And policy experts say that without clear guidance from the state, despite qualifying for federal benefits, they might be disqualified here in Ohio. This, is, again, is going to be a very murky area. Um, we're going to have to see how it plays out. This week, the state's Department of Job and Family Services is expected to release refusal to work guidelines related to the coronavirus reopening. 
The policy will stipulate what is considered a good cause for unemployment. They already launched an online form for reporting by employers to complement their long existing process to audit fraud. Organizations Policy Matters Ohio and Ohio Poverty Law Center released a joint statement on Tuesday calling for the state to clarify what is an acceptable reason to quit work or not accept an offer. And we're going to have to hope that the state steps in or the governor steps in to make some rules and some guidelines to help protect workers in this situation. They're asking the governor to expand acceptable reasons to quit work or refuse an offer to include COVID-related reasons like having pre-existing conditions or being in a vulnerable population, as well as not having appropriate child care. Typically, if you refuse work, you're not entitled to unemployment compensation. If you refuse work due to a COVID-19 reason, such as the child at home, the CARES Act does seem up to allow for that, but we know that the employer can step in and say that we offered a job and they refused it, and then that person would have to go through some appeals process unless uh, the governor were to do an executive order stating that we're going to allow unemployment for that reason. The CARES Act provided expansion to unemployment, including waiving work requirements and creating new qualifying conditions for unemployment. Work search requirements were waived as a result of um, the CARES Act provisions. We had some of that flexibility. It did not waive, though, the able and available to work requirement that attaches to unemployment benefits. Whether someone is available and able to work is the challenge. For some, COVID-19-related reasons like lack of child care could make them able but unavailable for work. Child care that you had counted on is not available due to the shutdown in the COVID-19, then that is a reason to continue PUA. It is not a reason under state unemployment law. And as of now, if you are dropped from regular unemployment because of refusal to work, you can't roll over into PUA. The category of those who do not regularly qualify for unemployment doesn't also mean those who don't regularly, who don't qualify for regular unemployment because they have been deemed ineligible for reasons of the good cause refusal to work. And if you refuse to work, it kicks off a determination process for investigation. We'd have to get individualized um, determination in each situation in terms of how that would be treated. But PUA rules and un state unemployment rules are different, and that is one of the issues that we're trying to work through right now. The state says they are working with the governor's office on the child care issue and hope to have more guidance soon. In Columbus, Ori Givens, Spectrum News. Ahead of the official unemployment report later this week, researchers at Drexel University estimate that 60% of workers in hospitality, retail, and leisure are now out of a job. They analyzed data from Homebase, a company that makes scheduling and time card software, and they found that employment in those industries dropped from more than 32 million jobs in mid-February to 12.5 million by the end of April. About a third of those job cuts came from businesses that shut down during that period. Even in places that were able to stay open, workers had their hours reduced. In partnership with Cleveland.com, this is Capital Letter. The State House and Senate were back in session, and House Republicans went on the offensive, moving to strip Dr. Amy Atkin of her authority to issue lasting orders. Cleveland.com political reporter Seth Richardson joins me now. Seth, how does this bill pass today limit Dr. Atkin's powers? Well, what the bill would do is essentially put a 14-day deadline on any order issued by Dr. Amy Acton, unless the... Um, um, a joint committee in uh, the legislature approves it for longer than that. And it also would take away her ability to, um, you know, put into place back-to-back -back orders. So as we've seen over the, uh, you know, over the course of the pandemic, there has been kind of this renewal of, um, uh, of the orders. Um, and it will also give standing for anybody to sue um, to overrule those orders, even if, you know, without having to prove that they've been abjectly affected by them. Oh, the opposite Tuesday. day in the State House today, as the debate over the amendment got underway, how are Democrats and Republicans responding? Okay. 
it has been kind of topsy turvy in far uh, insofar as uh, which side people come on. You know, you think back to kind of the nine eleven days, right? Uh, when I was growing up, and um, Democrats were kind of arguing against uh, more state authority, and Republicans were arguing for it. That's sort of flipped now, right? Where uh, at least in the Ohio House, the Republicans were basically saying, "Hey, we want to put a check on uh, uh, Dr. Acton." And uh, you know, as uh, your viewers probably know, they're um, they moved quite a bit to uh, basically rescind any orders that. Uh, uh, are possible, but yeah, there's been sort of this flip where Democrats are basically backing uh, Mike DeWine, you know, and uh, saying what a good job he's done, even though he's, you know, he's the reason they lost them in 2018. Politics makes strange bedfellows indeed. Uh, what is the support like for this bill in the Senate? Uh, very little at this point. I would think they, there doesn't seem to be much interest over there. Uh, you know, frankly, the uh, Senate didn't even really have a, a chance to look at it until um, you know it was rushed through committee this morning. You know, the senators over there hadn't even seen the language, so it, it, it's looking more and more like this was really just kind of a. Um, you know, kind of a grandstanding thing for uh, the House Republican Caucus to do, because uh, even if it does make it out of the Senate, there, you know, Mike DeWine has said he would veto it, and uh, it didn't pass with a veto-proof majority. Uh, this effectively does tie the governor's hands, uh, assuming that it actually makes it pass the Senate into his office. Uh, how is the governor responding to all of this? He's not a fan, to say the least. Um, he actually responded very quickly, which... Um, you know, most of the time, he uh, there, there's usually some wait time between when the governor responds on a bill um, and you know when he doesn't. And this was pretty immediate, where he came out and said, "Hey, the legislature is uh, basically wasting their time right now, trying to cause more confusion with uh, with the response right now, when they should be focused on the economy." Um, you know, we know Dewine doesn't necessarily get uh, you know two pointed whenever he's um, you know, criticizing people, but uh, it was a little more pointed today, I would say. Seth Richardson, thank you, Seth. Thank you. Learn what's happening and what's coming next at the State House. Subscribe to Capital Letter by going to cleveland.com slash capital letter. It will be a chilly night with mainly clear skies taking us into the night. Temperatures slowly dropping through the 40s into the 30s. And with lighter winds developing, yeah, that could lead to some patchy frost. If you took advantage of mild weather over the weekend, even early this week, you're going to need to protect those plants somehow because we're not done with frost. In fact, not only tonight, but likely later this weekend, we'll have to contend with it as well. Now, we'll get a nice day Thursday. Temperatures will bounce up tomorrow into the 60s. But Friday, another shot of cold, perhaps record-setting cold air comes in. May come in with a bit of a wintry mix in the middle part of the day Friday and then some snowflakes Friday night. One storm moving by, it's left us chilly here for the night tonight. That'll move off to the east. We get a daybreak tomorrow as high pressure will build in. Winds will turn out of the south, so we'll warm up, but there's another front approaching. This one will actually sneak in during the day tomorrow with very little fanfare. What we'll do is we'll change the wind. It could spark a shower in the afternoon, but the cold air lags behind it a bit. It's gonna wait for this system to move in that will tap into the colder air, and I'll show you what it does as we head into Friday. Future cast here for the night, dropping through the 40s and into the 30s by daybreak. So do expect some frost, especially away from the lake. That's where the advisories are out. For noon tomorrow, upper 50s and climbing into the 60s, especially south of the lake. A little cooler with the lake shore. It's funny how the lake keeps us warm at night and cooler during the day. It's where we could get a quick shower passing by with that weak front as it moves through. We cool down Thursday night, still dry. And look at this, Friday morning, that system comes in as the colder air comes in aloft. Now, surface temperatures above freezing here, so any snow that falls melts, but still kind of sloppy, especially south of Akron and uh, down toward Canton, Worcester, Friday afternoon. Here's where those frost advisories are out. I mentioned mainly south and east of Cleveland, uh, inland Ashtabula County down through Mansfield. We'll have to watch out for some frost here during the night. Our forecast down to 38 in the city with temperatures colder south and east of town. For the daytime tomorrow, we should recover to near 60 degrees with mostly sunny skies. It gets a little sloppy for Friday. We'll have to deal with a threat for some rain mixed with snow, maybe some snowflakes into Saturday. Chilly, likely a record low Saturday morning. Temperatures recover slowly as we head into next week. Right now, here's a live look at your storm track down the radar.
Coming up, how a popular ride-sharing company is offering its customers a way to save money. But before we head to the break, here are some resources to help you and your family. the opportunity to wake up and start fresh. We want to be a different kind of news channel, putting storytelling and community first. Your morning news, weekday mornings on Spectrum News One. Wake up and start fresh. We want to be a different kind of news channel, putting storytelling and community first. Well, it's really humbling to be invited to our neighbors' homes and help them plan their day. Welcome to your morning news. I'm Sophia Constantine. Let's take a look at your weather on the one. We've got a large band of precipitation. Your morning news. Weekday mornings on Spectrum News One. Sunday mornings. Take an in-depth look at your community. In focus with Mike Kalmeyer. A half-hour show dedicated to the important issues. Driven to bring decision makers together and committed to elevating discussion and debate. Your community, your state. Your show, In Focus with Mike Kalmar, Sunday mornings at 10.30 on Spectrum News 1, exclusively on Spectrum. Spectrum News 1, a new kind of news channel dedicated to refreshing storytelling and empowering communities across the Buckeye State. With your local forecast every 10 minutes and all of the essential news you need 24-7. Plus, in-depth shows and exclusives focused on your community. Always Ohio, always refreshing, always on. We are Spectrum News 1, exclusively on Spectrum. <coughs> Weather and the sky has always fascinated me, and I live with what I do. I come home, look at the weather forecast, and it's really a part of my life. It's not just a job, it is my passion. I'm Chief Meteorologist here with Dale. Well, we have a very experienced weather team. We know what's important to Ohioans as they make their plans every day because we are part of the community. I'm Eric Elwell, Chief Meteorologist, Spectrum News One. Share company Lyft is launching a new feature allowing its customers to save money. The new feature is called Wait and Save. It allows users to opt for a longer wait time to get picked up in exchange for a lower fare. In the past, Lyft allowed users to share rides with others for cheaper fares, but due to COVID-19, Lyft has put a temporary hold on ride sharing. Lyft says that the wait times and prices of rides will vary by time of day and area. The rideshare company Uber is laying off thousands of its employees. The company says it will let go close to 14% of its staff. Uber's customer support and recruiting teams will be affected. Here it is. The news about the coronavirus. And the company's hiring That's 